Perfect. Recording is started. Excellent. Thank you very much. So welcome, everybody. I want to call to order our inaugural meeting of the EMTSC Audit and Finance Committee. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. So before we uh, get into approving the agenda and moving through it, I just wanted to go ahead and do a quick roundtable so we all know everybody around the board, even though we're mostly familiar with each other. Uh, so I'll start and then we'll pass it on to the remainder of the committee members and then move in through administration. So I am Justin Laurie. I am a councillor at the town of Stony Plain and I am the chair of the audit and finance committee and we'll pass it over to our vice chair. Hi, I'm Chantal McKenzie and uh, I'm with the city of Spruce Grove councillor. Councillor Glenn Finstad, city of Leduc. Uh, Ray Ralph, Mayor Devon. All right, I can go next. Alan Tom with Ernst and Young, and we're providing uh, interim administration support to the EMTSC boards and committees. And then Deborah, we'll turn it over to you. Uh, Deborah Johnson, the interim controller. Uh, yeah, so for those who, well, I guess no, none of you would have met Deborah before. So she's, uh, as you know, working through some of the previous meetings. Uh, she's been contracted by the EMTSC to provide financial and that interim controller support as we start to stand up the back office functionality. So thanks, Deborah, for being with us. Thank you. As, as you get up to speed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's probably good, Justin. We can turn it back over to you. Excellent. So we do have a couple of uh, just some administrative support on the call with us. They'll be quietly in the background taking notes for our minutes and controlling the uh, Zoom meeting for us. So thank you very much for being a part of this group in the, that capacity and helping us out. Uh, so with that, I will ask uh, Al if you can share the presentation for today. Uh, you bet. And we will move along into the approval of the agenda. So we all have received the agenda uh, in our package beforehand. And so I will look for a mover to move the motion for the agenda, which we will see on the screen here right away. Uh, you don't, there's no motion, um, no motion to approve the agenda. Oh, we um, don't have a motion. Yeah, no, I, I didn't write oh, up okay. a motion to approve it. Yeah, perfect. To make one, but I didn't write one up for it. <laughs> All right, excellent. Well, I saw Ray's hand go up there. So, Ray, did you want to go ahead and make a motion for the agenda then? Oh, dude. Fight, fighting with the mute button. <laughs> Come on, unmute. There we go. <laughs> uh, I'd like to make a motion. We accept the agenda as presented. Excellent. And so for when I call the question, if we can just use the raise hand functionality. And so we'll call to question all in favor. And so that is carried unanimous. Thank you very much. So the first item on the agenda then is the adoption of the committee terms and reference. So I will turn it over to Al to go ahead and uh, take us through some of the highlights for that before we move to the motion. Sure, thank you. So so everybody's had an opportunity to see the uh, terms of reference in the past on a couple of different occasions. So I won't go through uh, in detail other than outlines really what the committee is expected to uh, to achieve and how it's organized to deliver on that mandate. Ultimately, you know, we look to the audit and finance committee to, uh, you know, first of all, accomplish a couple major milestones, which do ultimately go up to the board, which is uh, review of audited financial statements and budgets, right, as they, as they progress to the board. But I think the you know, the finance committee is also involved in areas around financial policy and supporting the creation and establishment of those items. Uh, it's there to support financial reviews, think about internal, you know, financial controls and, and really help be that interim point before things go to the board to support administration and their directives uh, and be able to provide insights and guidance up, up to the board for final decisions. Uh, so this terms of reference ultimately describes how that committee will function uh, by going through its purpose, duties, and functions, and its responsibilities. Uh, for the most part, the way this terms of reference is built is to provide a fairly broad uh, scope as opposed to really a, a tight definition and let that evolve over time as the board and the committee starts to learn how they want to work between each other and then ultimately recognizing that a CEO is going to come on board at a later point in time, how that function works uh, vertically through the system. 
so we do have some discussion around membership composition. We've already addressed that the last board meeting is represented by the four of you here, along with the chair and the vice chair. Uh, and then we, you'll see in here in a moment around meeting frequencies. Uh, what you'll see in terms of a meeting frequency is more than is required under the terms of reference for the board uh, for, for this audit and finance committee. Uh, but we'll talk about that momentarily, thinking that it's probably better to have a higher frequency in the early days of the of the committee and the commission as opposed to uh, the minimum accountabilities uh, within the terms of reference. So one of the first orders of business for this group uh, is to adopt that terms of reference, essentially to endorse it. Ultimately, the bylaws require the board to approve the terms of reference. Uh, so this group here today, having had it, would look to endorse that terms of reference. Uh, and then it'll move up to the board for ultimate approval. So I'm not sure if you have any any questions or if you wanted to to move straight into that component. Justin, I'll turn it back to you. For sure. Thanks, Al. Yeah. So what we'll do is uh, I'll, we'll go ahead. We'll open it up for questions of clarity prior to accepting the motion. Uh, once we've accepted the motion, then we can get into any uh, questions for debate. And then from there, we will call to uh, call to question at that point in time after that is closed. So at this point in time, do we have any questions of clarity from any of the committee members? Yeah, Glenn here, not so much a question of clarity. Maybe this is not the right place for it, but uh, it, it's possible that perhaps the strategic leadership slash role of the committee um, should be maybe stressed a little more. If that's a possibility, just to make sure it's it's clear and highlighted as to the uh, actual uh, I guess purpose. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Al, would you have any suggested verbiage on that that could be added in to provide a little bit more clarity on the uh, on the purpose and intent for the committee? Uh, Glenn, what were you looking to um, Just as highlight? It relates, yeah, as it relates to the strategic leadership uh, role of this of this uh, committee, um, might be just a little bit more uh, like prominent or pronounced, but just so that the, the purpose is is perhaps better understood. <clears throat> so, so what so what I would suggest that we can do uh -huh. is um, rather than try and wordsmith that particular. Right here, what I would suggest is that we could look for endorsement because that, that's not really a change, okay. I would suggest, right. but it's refining and, I, and, and that's yeah. not a problem. So okay. what if we look for the endorsement of it here and made an appropriate couple of edits and circulated oh, that sure. back both prior to it being, because ultimately then it'll get approved by the, uh, by the board. So we could make a couple yeah. of edits to that nature to refine the wording, okay. just recognizing that it doesn't really change the intent necessarily. No, it doesn't change the intent. Yeah. And then one other thing is, do we need a subcommittee of this committee by any stretch or is that overkill? Uh, I would suggest at this point in time, that would be more than would be necessary, uh, okay. especially given the early stages of the committee. And certainly okay. the subcommittee has the ability to do the, the, the committees have the ability to strike those if necessary uh, going forward. Uh, personally, I don't see the need for it today, but it may come down the line as the complexity of the commission come, moves forward. Okay. But the committee does have the ability to do that. Just a, just a couple of things that I just for clarity more than anything else. So I appreciate the comments. Yeah. yeah. So, so what we'll do is we'll take away to adjust some of the wording around stressing the leadership role okay. of, of the audit and finance committee and we can put that into an updated version for this group prior okay. to for the board for approval. Perfect. So with that, I can, I'm can i uh, happy to endorse and recommend the Audit and Finance Committee in terms of reference to the uh, Edmonton Metropolitan Transit Services Commission Board for approval as shown on pages four to eight of the agenda package. Oops. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. And, and before I accept that motion, I will just make sure we don't have any other questions or comments of clarity and understanding. Uh, Ray, looks like you do. I just want to ask, uh, sir, for some clarification in regards to the membership of four. If for a majority membership, then based on this, we'd actually have to have three members present to have a majority to, to make any decisions. So is that a realistic number? Just to uh, so I, I can comment. I think that it, 
is a realistic number. I think if it's less than four and you're at three, then you need two, right? And uh, I, I think that that starts to get to be a bit small from a finance committee, especially when you move into the, some of the more significant uh, decisions that would be, be required from the finance committee. If that's what you're, if that's the line you're I was thinking. actually thinking about the other way, about not going, going down, higher? but going higher to make it more feasible, I guess, or, you know, um, yeah. because right now, if we have two people that don't show up, we don't have a quorum. Agreed. When uh, just to back up a little bit, and we were discussing this at the board level, because of the size of the board, we would end up having board members who would be sitting on, you'd have to have people sitting on two committees at the same time, as well as the responsibilities at the board level. And so the discussion at that point was that we could start with the working, working hypothesis of four per committee and split the responsibilities. I agree that we have to watch for attendance uh, and make sure that, you know, what, one of the things that you'll see here coming up is setting the attendance for the following meetings. Now that doesn't always mean something doesn't happen at the last minute that caused a difficulty to, to attend. And so uh, in terms of management of the agenda, I think it's will be important to understand who can be there and when, and ideally you don't run into a situation where we need to defer a decision if we don't have enough people. Uh, but of course, that would be the, the option if we get to a board meeting and for whatever reason, we don't have enough people to hold the, you know, we don't end up with three people, right, to meet quorum, then uh, you may have to defer a decision. But I think we'll just have to make sure that we manage that going forward, unless we want to look at going back to the board and seeking to increase the number to, to five and have some dual representation across committees. I think what I was trying to bring it across is just more for awareness and that uh, we're, you know, because we really didn't talk too much about quorum um, when we talked about the board meeting with that I recall that, um, you know, just so everybody that's sitting here, we, you know, just has it in their forefront that if we don't have uh, at least three people at one of our meetings, they basically can't make any decisions. So that's kind of where I was coming from on it. So, you know. Is the chair not sort of... Uh available to, to uh, sit on any committee meeting and would he have the voting power or would that uh, cause some angst if that were to happen? So I, I think what you're referring to would be, does the chair not have ex officio on all committees? And I believe right. that is the case. And I believe it might even be the chair and vice chair. Al, if you can confirm. <clears throat> I might have to defer to I might have to defer to Haley who's probably looking up quickly for us but I believe that it is the uh, I believe it's the chair and they do have that status so if you did run into a and if my memory doesn't fail me we did talk about that exact situation so thank you for reminding me of that if there was a, a situation you could look at remedying it with with that particular piece as well I, I think one important point, and, and Al and I were kind of talking about this a little bit earlier, is that in, in reality, from a scope perspective, there are very limited items that are required to come to this committee prior to them going to the board. So if we do happen to be in a situation where we don't have quorum and we might not be able to uh, pass a motion, that doesn't actually defer that item from appearing in front of the board if it is of time sensitivity, because ultimately this committee does not, I believe, and Allegan, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was the audited financials and the budget, I think were the two items that we have to uh, approved before they go to the board. Everything else essentially could directly go to the board. It's just the audit and finance committee essentially is getting a first glance opportunity at it to give it a, a, a once over, make sure that there's nothing obvious, glaring, etc. Ask any questions and challenges that may be brought up in the board meeting. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. So I, I agree. It certainly, you know, as as committees are smaller and smaller, it it can make it a little bit more difficult. But I think uh, given the fact that you know, not achieving quorum does not put us in a significant risk. I, I think we can work around the, the scheduling of the meeting dates. Uh, everybody can ensure that they're advising if something has come up that's going to conflict and we can reschedule. We, we have that ability uh, within there. We just have to provide the appropriate notice. Uh, As Chantel, I say, I was just, yeah, sorry, I was just trying to bring it for the forefront. That's yeah. all I was in, so. For sure. And, and I think it's a, a great thing to bring up and make sure that we're all aware of so that we're, we're very cautious as we move forward and knowing if we have conflicts and bringing those to light as soon as possible. Chantelle, you had a question or comment as well? Yes, I was just wondering, like, 
and ironically, I was actually going to bring it up on our next uh, discussion when we talk about the meeting. I do think that three is important. I wouldn't want to go to two. Um, I, I think it isn't three is important to have quorum and, and make sure that we're mo moving forward and checking things. But it's more or less, and I think we can talk about it in the next motion a little bit too, is, you know, the the recommendation is that we meet the, the Thursday two weeks before the regular board meetings. Um, but because when you have a smaller board, when there is four, only four, I think it's really critical that we make sure that we're all able to attend. I know I sit on a senior housing board where there is only four. Well, now we only have three municipalities uh, on it. And we just, you know, we have that flexibility. So as long as within our, within our, um, bylaws and our web policies or whatever we're calling them, sorry, uh, that it gives us that flexibility that it doesn't have to be on that particular Thursday if we have to move it in order to get quorum. And I, I think that that's more important, but I think three definitely should be in there. Yeah, thank you. And, and I believe the only specificity that exists is the number of meetings we have to hold. I don't believe there is anything stating that they must be on this date. Um, Al and I spoke and we chose the, uh, the Thursday, two weeks prior to the board meeting in order to give enough time to uh, get any documentation ready for the actual board meeting as those packages have to come out. I believe it's five business days before uh, the full board meeting. And so we wanted to give some administrative time in between the audit and finance committee meeting and that date and time to make sure any materials that needed to be prepared for the full board uh, could be done so without having to be rushed. Um, Alan, is there anything that uh, you need to add or that uh, you've heard no. that's <clears throat> concerning? No, I think that if you're uh, if you have a meeting date that you want to postpone, then you'll you know the the governance requires um, public notice of the meetings five business days in advance. So if you want to postpone something, certainly you've already made the notice that would exist, and so you're actually extending your notice. So that would be fine. If you want to move a date up, um, you know you we just want to make sure that that's not a day before or two day before a decision, right? So people have time, you know. So from a public perspective, we're meeting those. Uh, those requirements, that's the only thing to consider in, in doing so. So I think if everybody continues to monitor their calendar, you know, the, a week and a half before the meeting and raises any flags, there should be an opportunity to adjust as required. Excellent. Thank you. So yes, I, I would just suggest then that uh, all the members of the Audit and Finance Committee uh, just ensure that they're diligent with their calendars in uh, letting you know myself and Alan and Chantel know if there are any conflicts uh, with the meetings as, as soon as you are aware so that we can make sure we are able to schedule those. Thankfully with a small board we're also it's a little bit easier to be nimble as well and we can usually try and find an alternative date uh, that works for everybody pretty quickly versus trying to do it with eight or ten or twelve people. Uh, Glenn, I see you unmuted. Did you have another comment? No, I'm good, thanks. Excellent. So then with that, I'll accept the motion that you put on the floor. And are there any other questions or comments or debate? Perfect, seeing none, I will then call that to question. So we have four hands, so that is unanimous. Thank you very much. So next we'll move into the uh, adoption of the committee meeting and schedule, which we've already talked a little bit about. Uh, but Al, if you wanna add a couple of comments, then we can open up to questions. Sure. Uh, generally, these are on Thursdays, uh, as Justin had mentioned, in terms of timing with the board meetings. Uh, you'll see a couple of denoted in there that say Wednesday, just due to conflicts when we took a look at calendars with EMRB and other items. So wanting to make sure that we are cognizant of that in advance. Uh, so we've set these items forward. Again, we've set it as frequently as, mo as monthly, given the initial workload. Uh, but I think it's uh, fair to ask the question whether in certain months they're actually required, whether there's sufficient right work to come in front of the committee that is required. So in keeping with what we were talking about earlier with scheduling, these can get into your calendars, uh, recognizing that there isn't a mandate to hold all of these meetings. And so it is within the purview of the committee to decide uh, if you would like to cancel any of them, you know, based on the material that's coming forward. Uh, and certainly to adjust their, their scheduling. I would suggest the ones that are uh, most important from my perspective will be the ones towards uh, September, October, uh, as that is when things line up within governance around the, um, the budgets and the um, business plan for the subsequent fiscal year in terms of approvals. So, you know, that leading into uh, the September and the October ones will be important from those perspectives. 
and uh, then not for this year, but subsequent to that, you know, sometime around the end of the first quarter of the calendar year when audits get completed and, and that type of stuff. In and around there, it's really the, the dates are meant to manage uh, uh, information as it comes through the committee during the stand-up stage. Excellent, thank you. And, you know, as you mentioned, I just want to make aware, obviously, being in public and that this is recorded, that the Audit and Finance Committee must meet for four times per year but they may meet more frequently in the execution of his duties and responsibilities. So just as was kind of highlighted by Alan, uh, given that we're in the initial standup, we feel that it would be uh, prudent for us to meet monthly to make sure that uh, we're catching everything as it comes along, uh, even if that is just a quick touch base. But at any point in time, if we don't feel that there's uh, substantial information to present, we can also cancel those meetings uh, if we don't need them. Um, with that, Al, I do see that uh, there are no times, proposed times listed on the current one. Uh, and I know that was a bit of a topic of conversation. So I'm just wondering if we should have a little bit of an idea from each one of the board members uh, as to what their traditional or typical availability on Thursdays would be if there's any times that uh, definitely don't work or any times that do, uh, so that we can maybe, as you said, go forward and actually get calendar invites in there with times. So Chantel, did you want to go first? Is there anything on Thursdays that uh, would cross over for you? Yes, and that's actually I do have my uh, senior housing board meetings on Thursdays um, and I have had a few conflicts, but uh, again, because it's a smaller board, they've often if we had a meeting in the afternoon, then they move it to the morning for me and vice versa. Uh, but generally speaking, those are usually Thursday mornings for me. So preferably if we could have them in the afternoon would be great. Okay, Glenn, how about yourself? Yeah, Thursday afternoons are better than uh, Thursday mornings. I have the uh, the Edmonton Regional Waste Advisory Committee on the odd Thursday morning, but uh, so the afternoon would work well. Okay, and Ray? Um, Thursday afternoon works the best for me because Thursday evenings I have my committee the whole meeting, so. Okay. Yeah, no, it's perf if we can do it, I, I would prefer not to do the evenings. Uh, I know Thursday evenings aren't necessarily a great one for me either. Um, so Thursday afternoons do work well for me as well. Um, did we want a little bit earlier time or is the three o'clock start time as we had today sufficient? Three o'clock works for me because uh, otherwise you get too early in the afternoon, it kind of screws up my whole day, but okay. uh, three o'clock's good. Three is good for me. Okay. Three o'clock would be great as well. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, so we will go forward with those uh, with those meeting dates then starting at 3 p.m. Uh, any other questions from the committee members? Perfect. Seeing none, I will ask for somebody to make the motion. I, I, and just I do have a motion up on the, the screen. The recommendation actually stated, you know, two weeks before, but I don't think that's what we want to put in the motion necessarily to be confined, right, confined to that. So I've got a uh, a motion here. For sure. Ray? Sure, I'll be happy to make the motion that the Audit and Finance Committee adopt the committee meeting schedule for 2021 as presented at the March 17, 2021 committee meeting. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ray. Any other questions from the committee members? I just have one. Uh, with regard to the Audit and Finance Committees, are these closed meetings? Are they public meetings or what? what was the intent with them? So Al, if you want to speak to that. Yeah, they're, they're public meetings. Uh, that's what the bylaws uh, stipulate okay. as well. So, so they are public meetings, but they have the same provisions. So you'll note today we have an in-camera portion as well. So where it's appropriate to move in camera, then the committee can do so. Okay. So in terms of other attendees, like, I don't know, uh, would our support staff, for example, be invited to attend or should they be? So it'll work the same as the board meetings, uh, as I, I think we're very close to having the board meetings and these committee meetings would be live streamed. So anybody has the ability to watch them. The, the emtsc.ca website is up and running now, and it's got the calendar of meetings for everything associated with the commission. So board and this committee and, uh, and the HR committee and uh, materials will be posted there as appropriate, along with a link to the live stream feed. So uh, people can attend and watch in that manner. And then anybody we need to join from a presentation perspective or support a particular agenda item will have a direct invitation to join. Yeah, I just wanted that clarity. I appreciate that. Thank you. Excellent. Any other questions or comments? 
Seeing none, then I will call that to question. And we have four hands, that is unanimous. Perfect, thank you very much. So that at this point in time completes our, uh, our public portion of the meeting. So we will be moving in camera and we will have a motion on there. Um, Al, the one thing that I don't see on the motion is uh, traditionally, if we do have anybody from the public attending, uh, we would have to take their names and advise them when we come out of camera. So is that something that we have to do at the committee level as well? Or because we are live streaming, um, which actually I'm not sure, this, this meeting is not live streaming, correct? Or is this one live streaming? Uh, right. This one, people would be, would have been able to, it's not live streaming. People would be able to join the Zoom, right? Okay. Meeting that had the link in the session. So uh, we don't, to my knowledge, I think Haley, you can confirm, but we don't have any members of the public. I, I will need to confirm just in that approach when we've done it at the board meetings, we've moved out of, you know, which have been public now, right? For the previous yeah. three, uh, we moved back out of camera and uh, but we're not notifying anybody who was in attendance at the time that we're coming back out of out of camera. Yep. So uh, I don't believe that that's a requirement. I haven't seen it in terms of the governance bylaws or, or any of the regulations. And certainly the recordings will be made available so people will be able to go back and understand any discussions that had taken, you know, any decisions, I suppose, that had been uh, made coming back out of in camera or if there is any continuation typically we try and put the in camera items last on the agenda so. yeah no definitely and and Lisa, said i'm not 100 percent sure whether it's something that might be addressed in the mga that we might be bound to uh bound to follow uh so it might be something that we just want to confirm yeah um I, I believe once we're live streaming as long as that stays consistent as long as the it keeps going with us in a breakout room and just a slide or uh, something on the video stating that, you know, board is currently in closed session. I believe that's okay. Um, but I think in the virtual meeting where we have, we would have to physically remove uh, any attendees. I think we are required to let them know when we are done to give them the opportunity to rejoin. Okay. Um, so just, mm -hmm. just a point of clarity, we might want to make sure thankfully today we don't have any issue because we do not have any additional public attendees at this point in time. Uh, so, any other questions or comments? And we will be live streaming yep. by the next, we will be live streaming by the next session. Yep. yep. Any other questions or comments before we look for the motion? Seeing none, I will look for a mover then to move the motion for the board to go into camera. Uh, Chantel has her hand up. Perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll move that the board move in camera in accordance with the provisions of Division 2, exceptions to disclosure of the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act, RSA 2000, CF25, as per Section 16-28. Excellent. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments on that? Seeing none, I will call the question. All in favor? And we have four hands up on that. So that motion is carried and we will go ahead and go in camera. So do we have to go into a the recording has been restarted. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. And thank you for the discussion that we had there. So at this point in time, uh, we will look for a motion that the committee accept the material and discussion is presented in camera. Who would like to make that motion? Glenn, saw your hand go up there. Excellent. Any questions or comments before we call that question? Excellent. Seeing none, I will call the question. All in favor? And we have four hands, so that is carried. Thank you very much. So just quickly before we move to adjournment, I just want to recap. We do have one action item that uh, the administration will bring the terms of reference purpose statement. They will circulate that to the uh, committee members before that, that uh, goes through to the final package for the board to see. Uh, but since it does not change uh, the purpose or the premise of the uh, actual terms of reference, uh, we won't need to come back for another motion of approval on that. So with that, I will ask if there are any other questions or comments that need to be addressed before we call for an adjournment. Excellent. Seeing none, I will say thank you very much for attending today and for our, uh, participating in our inaugural meeting of the Audit and Finance Committee. I look forward to uh, our, our many, many meetings to come in the coming year as, as we continue the path forward. So thanks, everybody, for your participation today. I wish you all the best. Enjoy the beautiful sunshine that's out there, and we will call it adjourned.
Thanks, Mr. Chair. See you all tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. See you tomorrow. Thanks.